Let's review the idea of average rate of change. First of all, the definition of average rate of change requires us to have a function and an interval. So if our function is f and our interval goes from a to b, then we can evaluate the average rate of change using this formula. You can think of this as plugging the endpoint into the function, plugging the starting point into the function and subtracting, and then dividing by the distance between the endpoint and the starting point. And it's helpful to think about what this would mean on the graph of a function. So let's say I have a curve y equals f of x that I get from graphing the function. And I imagine two inputs, a and b values, on the x-axis. And then I look at the value of f when I plug in these two endpoints for this interval. So what am I really calculating? f of b minus f of a is the vertical distance between those two output values. That's how much the function changes between the two inputs, that vertical difference. And then the horizontal difference is b minus a. That's how long it takes for the function to achieve that difference described in the numerator. So what you're really looking at here is a change in y values divided by a change in x values. And that means you're actually looking at the slope of the line that goes through those two points. So average rate of change is connected with the graph of the function by thinking of it as slope. And it's a very useful function, uh, a very useful idea um, which shows up a lot in calculus. So first of all, let's make sure we understand the definition by using it. I want to calculate the average rate of change of a function on the interval from 2 to 4. So if I'm using the formula the way it was written on the previous slide, my a is the first endpoint of this interval, my b is the second endpoint, and so the difference formula f of b minus f of a over b minus a becomes f of 4 minus f of 2 over 4 minus 2. Okay, now f of 4 and f of 2 we can look up in this table that describes the function f. So first of all, f of 4 is 12, f of 2 is 4, Now let's simplify the numerator. We can simplify with subtracting 12 minus 4 to get 8. And the denominator we can simplify by subtracting 4 minus 2 to get 2. So our fraction is 8 over 2, which simplifies to 4. So in this case, the average rate of change is 4. So you can think of that as the slope of the line that would connect these two points on the graph of f. Here's another example, but this time instead of a table of values for f, we're going to have a formula for f. Doesn't really change how we approach this problem. Again, we can look at our interval and think of those endpoints as the values we have to plug into our function. So to get the average rate of change, we'll take f of the endpoint minus f of the starting point divided by the difference between the ending point and the starting point. And then we have to evaluate f of 6 and f of 3 by plugging them into the formula. So first of all, f of 6 will be 6 squared plus 3 times 6. And f of 3 will be 3 squared plus 3 times 3. I'm going to simplify the denominator as I go this time so that I don't have to write as much. Okay, now 6 squared is 36. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 squared is 9. And 3 times 3 is 9. 
although I should be careful, notice I have a minus sign out front, so I have to distribute that minus sign if I drop the parentheses. That means I have to subtract both of these nines. All right, uh, so 18 minus 9 minus 9, that all cancels out, leaving just the 36 in the numerator. And then 36 divided by 3 is 12. Let's do another one, but this time we have a variable involved for one of the endpoints. So we're going from the starting point a equals 3 to the ending point 3 plus h. So the idea is typically that you're interested in a small difference between the input values. You're, you're going to consider an input of 3 and an input that's just a little bit more than 3. And h can represent a small number, but we don't know which number, so we're going to have to do all the calculations just writing an h. So let's see what happens this time. The difference quotient formula is f of 3 plus h minus f of 3 over 3 plus h minus 3. f of 3 plus h is 3 plus h quantity squared plus 3 times 3 plus h. So, so far all I've done is plug 3 plus h in for each of the x's in the formula of f. And then from that I have to subtract f of 3. So f of 3 is actually the same thing we got in the previous slide. 3 squared is 9, 3 times 3 is 9, you add those together and you get 18. So we're subtracting 18. And then in the denominator, when I simplify 3 plus h minus 3, the 3 minus 3 cancels, leaving just an h. Now, in order to simplify in the numerator, I'm going to have to expand this quantity 3 plus h quantity squared. So to do that, I have 3 squared, which is 9. I have 3 times h plus h times 3. So that's 6h plus h squared. So what I really did here was to FOIL out 3 plus h times 3 plus h. Then I get 3 times 3 and 3 times h. Now if we try to simplify 9 plus 9 minus 18, those cancel out. 6h plus 3h is 9h plus h squared. Now in the numerator I can factor out an h and once that's factored out we can see that it cancels with the h that's in the denominator so we end up with the expression 9 plus h. So I have an unknown h in the denominator, but that's because I have an unknown h I'm plugging in as one of my endpoints, as part of the endpoint 3 plus h. Let's do one more like this. These problems show up a lot in calculus. So let's practice it with a variable, both for the starting point and for the difference between the starting point and the ending point. So this time, a is x, b is x plus h, and I have to do the same thing we just did, which means I plug in f of b minus f of a over b minus a, and simplify. So I have x plus h replacing the x's in the formula for f. That gives me x plus h quantity squared plus 3 times x plus h minus f of x. So minus x squared. Actually, I'm subtracting the whole thing, so I should also have minus 3x. In the denominator, x minus x cancel, leaving just that h. Again, I can expand the first expression 
as x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. And then distribute in the second expression to get 3x plus 3h. What can I combine here? Well, I have x squared minus x squared. Those cancel. I'm actually going to put a line through them to keep track of that. Uh, I have a 3x and a minus 3x. So those cancel. What's left? Only things that have an h. 2xh plus h squared plus 3h divided by h. So again, we can factor an h out of the numerator, leaving 2x plus h plus 3. And after factoring that h out, it cancels with the h that's in the denominator. So our final answer is 2x plus h plus 3. So we've run into this expression several times uh, where we have uh, plus h. And notice what was happening whenever we plug in x plus h minus x, those two x's cancel, which is why we ended up with just an h in the denominator. And so a lot of times, you, this is the way you'll see the expression written. And this, is, uh, this quantity has a name. It's called the difference quotient for the function f. And as I mentioned before, it becomes very important when you start to study calculus.